Northern Michigan's news leader. This is 9 and 10 News at 6. First at 6, there are now more than a million coronavirus cases confirmed worldwide. In Michigan, we are continuing to see the number of cases grow by the thousands. There's been a flurry of developments today as we learn more about the far-ranging impact of the coronavirus. Millions of Americans are filing for unemployment. Schools are trying to teach students remotely. And there are now three more deaths in northern Michigan. According to the state, the total number of case, uh, cases in Michigan now stands at 10,791. There are 417 deaths, another one-day record increase. On a national level, there are more than 236,000 cases in the U.S. This is more than double any other country in the world. The U.S. death toll stands at 5,758. And today, we learned about a death in Sheboygan County and the second deaths in Isabella County and in Grand Traverse County. In Grand Traverse County, the health department believes a woman in her 70s was the first to contract the coronavirus without ever leaving Grand Traverse County. With growing questions about the coronavirus and how it's impacting northern Michigan communities, we've received countless questions about rumors of COVID-19 patients being transferred to northern Michigan hospitals. Today, 9 and 10's Courtney Hunter asked Munson Healthcare's chief medical officer, Dr. Christine Nefsey, about that. So there was an executive order talking about, you know, the uh, disproportionate number of cases downstate and asking hospitals that had fewer cases to be um, relief hospitals, but that was on a volunteer basis. And so we as a system really look at the numbers and look at our obligation to our patients in northern Michigan and understanding that we are really the only hospitals in many of our communities didn't feel like it was prudent. So as of now, there's no plan to do that. When it comes to travel within the states, while that is legal under Governor Whitmer's stay-at-home order, Dr. Nefsi says that if you do travel north, you need to be self-isolating for 14 days in order to prevent any potential exposure and for the safety of the entire community. Governor Gretchen Whitmer made it official today, signing an executive order suspending face-to-face -face learning in Michigan schools for the rest of the school year. Students will still get instruction, but the details of how, that'll be left up to each district. 9 and 10's Eric Lloyd was in Lansing for the press conference and has our continuing coverage. These are unprecedented waters for Michigan and the school districts. How do you handle missing face-to-face -face learning for more than three and a half months? Well, right now we're shifting to remote learning, and for each school district, that means something different. We know that whether you are in um, one part of our state or another, it can be vastly different access to resources, to broadband. Scenes like this will not happen again this school year. Kids will not be going to class, but they aren't done with lessons. Governor Gretchen Whitmer signing an executive order today, shifting all learning from classroom to the home, each district deciding how to do that. Students and families will not be punished if they are unable to participate in their alternate learning plan. This comes three weeks after the governor closed schools until mid-April. But with COVID-19 not slowing down, the chance of returning to school faded away. We can't wait to see what happens. We've got to start making plans to meet the needs of our kids. College prep tests are canceled, but seniors will still be able to graduate. Employees will be paid, and schools can start next year early if they choose. It's the new normal in the age of COVID-19. I know many of you tune in every week hoping for some good news, hoping I'll say something that shows we're ready to turn back to life as normal. I ask that until that day comes, you keep making smart choices. Governor Whitmer went to say that it might be a month until we see the apex of this crisis, so more changes could be coming as we make our way through the summer and into next school year. In Lansing, Eric Lloyd, 9 and 10 News. Superintendents throughout the state are working out plans that best fit their districts. 9 and 10's Gabriella Galloway found out how two districts plan to continue to educate their students at home. Michigan K-12 schools will continue to look much like this. With the governor's announcement to keep schools closed, superintendents are working out their plans. We had anticipated this scenario. Cadillac Area Public Schools are going with a blended plan. A lot of our plans right now are including a technology-enhanced version of uh, student learning as well as a paper-pencil version of student learning. Of their 3,200 students, about 20% don't have access to Internet 
and about 40% don't have computer devices. We're looking at device distribution so that um, if a device is the barrier, we can provide a device. Chippewa Hill School District is working on a similar plan with the same technological barriers. I wouldn't be surprised if it's in that 25 to 30 percent range. The Michigan Education Association supports the governor and says distance learning can never fully replace face-to-face -face time between students and educators, but we must do the very best we can under these unprecedented circumstances. Also supporting her decision is the state superintendent, Dr. Michael Rice, saying in this public health crisis, the governor continues to put public health first. I appreciate her efforts to address public health and public education needs at this extraordinarily difficult time. Through this time, educators are hoping everyone can stay positive. Stay home, stay healthy, and stay strong. If you can do those three things, we'll conquer this and we'll prevail in the end. For 9 and 10 News, I'm Gabriella Galloway. The MHSAA is currently reviewing the governor's announcement before making a decision about the rest of the winter sports postseason tournaments along with spring sports. They say that they will have an announcement by tomorrow afternoon. Stick with us and MySportsNow.com for updates on the MHSAA's decision. And if you want to ask the governor about the state's latest steps to combat the coronavirus, you now have a chance. Governor Gretchen Whitmer is hosting a virtual town hall tonight starting at 7. You can watch it right here on 9 and 10 News and on Local 32. We're also live streaming the event on the SBTV app and 9 and 10 News.com. Make sure to send in your questions before it starts. We shared the link to do that on 9 and 10 News.com. COVID-19 is killing increasingly more people in the metro Detroit area, but it has also been deadly in northern Michigan. Sheboygan, Emmett, Isabella, Kalkaska, Lacosta, and Masaki counties have all reported deaths from the virus, and today in Grand Traverse County, their second death in 24 hours. 9 in 10's Chloe Keipel spoke with the Grand Traverse County Health Department about what they're doing to prevent more deaths. At the end of all of this, we are all going to know someone or know of somebody who has succumbed to COVID-19. Two of our northern Michigan neighbors gone in one day. Grand Traverse County health officials reported the deaths of two COVID-19 patients. The second caught the virus out in the community. Public information officer Emmy Lucas says this is a wake-up call. Easily you can say that that spread is going to come north. Now social distancing isn't just advice. It could mean the difference between life and death. You have to think about the interaction you had with one person might just be one interaction, but who did they have interactions with previous? Across the region, at least seven northern Michigan counties have suffered deaths too. The health department is tracking the virus's spread and telling everyone to stay home and be extremely careful if you have to leave. With the grocery store, don't make it a family event. Make it a one-person event that somebody goes and stocks up. The Grand Traverse County Health Department also urging downstate residents to think twice before retreating to their homes up north. Stay home. Do not come up here. It's not an unfriendly thing. It's just a reality thing that we do not have the resources that Detroit has. The message is look at Detroit, look at New York, uh, look at what seems to be starting to happen here. It's going to get a good deal worse up here before it starts to get better. That supports the notion all the more that this is a dangerous time and that it's really worth Everybody's hearkening to the message and staying at home and as far away from people as possible. In Traverse City, Chloe Keipel, 9 and 10 News. Some northern Michigan first responders are recovering tonight after testing positive for the coronavirus. The Otsego County emergency manager tells us three members of the Otsego County EMS rescue team have tested positive for the virus. He says one is in the hospital right now on a ventilator. Three more are awaiting their test results. He says the team has protective gear and has been using it properly. They do everything right, but it's still, you see it, it's happening everywhere. The care providers are on the front lines and they're, they are getting hurt. Take it serious. I mean, if our people can get it, that means the everyday citizens can get it. And this is serious stuff. Neighboring departments have helped them out uh, responding to some calls. Deming says anyone who may have been exposed is in quarantine and following the health department's guidance. Well, each day we update you on the latest coronavirus numbers, including those who have lost their life. But it's hard to put those in perspective until it hits close to home. 
Tonight, many in Emmett County are grieving after losing a community pillar to the virus. 9 in 10's Xavier Hershevitz talked to those remembering Larry Cummings tonight. He was a kind soul uh, with a passion for teaching and making our world an even better place. For more than 50 years, Larry Cummings taught history and geography at North Central Michigan College. He loved experiencing the world. He loved international travel. He traveled to 50 countries, always bringing an experience back to share in his classroom. He really was beloved. Students would be certain to take a course or two that he taught. Like former student Tiffany Leno. Instead of teaching from the book, he taught from experience. It was real. He had been there. He had done it. You know, he had the tales to tell it. Leno ended up coming back to campus as a colleague of Cummings. I was just lucky to share, you know, an office in the same administrative building as him, and I would always walk past and kind of peek my head in and say hello to him. It just felt like he was never too busy for people, for his students or for his colleagues. Along the way, inspiring generations of students. I think a lot of people are traveling and educating, inspired by what he had to share with us. Dr. Finley says they are already thinking of ways they can honor his legacy on campus. He captured the spirit of this place, and, and we most certainly do want to honor that. We're going to miss him. We're, we're really going to miss him. At 76 years old, Cummings is one of the more than 400 people in Michigan who have died because of the coronavirus. He is far from just a number. He was a husband, father, friend to many, and leaves an everlasting impact. Xavier Hershevitz, 9 and 10 News. More recreation access sites are closing to the public to try and limit public exposure to COVID-19. The Leelanau County Sheriff's Office says multiple boat launches are being closed. They're in the villages of Northport and Sutton's Bay and a location on Hilltop Road. The Leelanau County Sheriff's Office says that starting tomorrow, DNR officers will be posted at the launches. The state has not closed any of its own public boat launches. The Department of Labor said today 6.6 .6 million Americans filed for unemployment last week. That is double the number of applications reported for that week, uh, for the week before that, and 10 times the previous weekly record set in 1982. Some estimate 20 million people could be out of work by the summer. 9 and 10's David Lydon has more details on how local agencies are helping those out of work right now. Those are staggering numbers. We're watching them every day. The dramatic rise in unemployment numbers means organizations like Northwest Michigan Works in Traverse City are seeing more and more people turning to them for help. We know that they're going to be rising and continuing to go up. Uh, we're working every day with unemployment to see if we can help uh, in any way. Feel some of those calls. We're getting people that call our Michigan Works offices every day with questions about their unemployment. People across the state have expressed frustration about not being able to reach the state unemployment office. Michigan Works has been offering tips to get through. Don't call at the traditional busy times. You know, 8 o'clock in the morning is probably the worst time to call. 8 o'clock on Monday morning, you're guaranteed not to get in. But if you want to wait until 8 o'clock at night, the traffic seems to be down and people are getting through that way. And Michigan Works says companies in northern Michigan are hiring and looking to fill positions right now. And obviously, you want to look at the executive order and the essential jobs that are out there are all over in our area. There are some manufacturing companies that are tooling up right now. The grocery stores, they're definitely been contacting our business services uh, team and saying, how do we get in contact with people that are being laid off? We will get through it. We are putting every effort into making sure that everybody can be heard. Everybody can get contacted. In Traverse City, David Lydon, 9 in 10 News. And despite the latest job report numbers, Wall Street actually ended the day in black. The Dow Jones jumped 469 points to 21,413. The NASDAQ added 126 to finish at 7,487. And the S&P 500 gained 56 to hit 2,526. Last week, Feeding America delivered 24,000 pounds of food to give away in Sault Ste. Marie. They ran out of food before serving all those who showed up for it. Well, today they got another delivery, this time with an extra 12,000 pounds of food. Volunteers sorted, boxed, and gave it to those who lined up at Big Bear Arena. This time, they had enough food. Practicing social distancing, volunteers spent the day helping out for the good cause. 
We're just thankful that we're able to get people who are willing to risk that and to come out because we did it last week with only 10 people. And today we have about 25 in here trying to pack these boxes. We just have to be very careful. If you would like to help with future Feed America events or donate locally, head to 9in10news.com for more information. Coming up on 9 and 10 News at 6, how doctor's offices are using 21st century technology to still see patients who are staying home. Plus, turkey hunters, you have the green light to go out and enjoy the outdoors. Well, what the DNR says you need before bagging your bird. Of course, our weather right now has been gorgeous. So much bright sunshine, incredible temperatures. Most of you in the 50s and some 60s. And it's going to continue tomorrow. We'll talk about that forecast next. Northern Michigan's most accurate and reliable forecast from the Doppler 9 and 10 weather team. Now talk about just a gorgeous day, so much sunshine, a few of the very high, thin cirrus clouds. That's all you're getting out there right now. There's Charlevoix and uh, just a perfect day. Now, being so clear, you can get some great pictures out there. Now, Tim sent the picture in from uh, Trapper City. Had some clouds out there yesterday, but want to note, like, why is the color difference of the water here and what's going on up here. The biggest difference is that, well, one, the water's so clear now that it's like it's further down in the water and the fact that this is shallow water. So easy to get the, a lot of reflection, a little more blue here, but the deeper blue because it's deep water overall. That's why you got the different colors going on. And plus, you got sand right here making a bigger difference back behind that. It's probably more uh, dirt and rocks going on as you head up towards uh, deeper parts of West, Grass Tra West Traverse Bay. Of course, conditions out there today, Right now, Charlotte White, 48 degrees. Winds are light, five miles per hour. And current temperatures will generally in the 50s. You got a couple of 60s. And of course, if you're near Lake Shore, you got a little lake breeze setting up. It is cooler already in the 40s. Of course, it's not going to change much tonight. I mean, what you got last night, this morning, and today is basically the same going on tonight. That's 9 o'clock. Here's tomorrow morning. Perhaps some patchy clouds, a little light fog in some areas but it won't last. You have a beautiful day, just some extra clouds coming in from the west here with our next system. And th this really arrives late tomorrow night and Saturday morning. There it is rotating through 7 a.m. going into 1 p.m. on Saturday. Could see a little snowflakes popping up around the UP. Don't worry about it. It's not going to be lasting much. It's not going to add up to anything. And behind this, obviously already clearing out your sky. So a small system and a Saturday maybe an hour or so long, and then things beginning to get better. For now, the warmth you see back here still rotates in tonight, and then beyond the system, we cool down a little bit, but then we warm right back up. Tonight, clear and quiet, cooling down your temperatures, very similar to what you had this morning in those 20s, and of the warmest spots in the lower 30s. How about 25 right here in Gladwin and Ludington at 27. Now, tomorrow, our sunshine, some patchy clouds and cooler temperatures lakeside, mile 58. But here with the east southeast wind looking good for Traverse City and not too bad in Frankfurt right now for a high temperature tomorrow 56, 59 a heart, and 61 in Mount Pleasant. So there's the warmth and sunshine for one more day. On Saturday, a lot more clouds, a lot of showers coming on through. And for Sunday, well, back to sunshine. And temperatures begin warming back up. But then the more wet, there's more wet weather in that weekly forecast for Monday through Wednesday. But the temperatures aren't half bad with a lot of 40s and 50s and some 60s. Going to the doctor is not like it used to be. Still ahead at 6. What to expect when your appointment is a televisit? Going to the doctor in person can be difficult as people take steps to protect against the coronavirus. It's leading to more televisits to see patients. Instead of going into a clinic when you feel sick, you can make an electronic visit with a computer or smartphone. It allows for your doctor to see you and interact with you while limiting the risk of exposure. Traverse Health Clinic is one of many places using this new method. They want to assure patients they're still here to help. Our staff also help them with navigating that, learning how to sign up to our system here to get on our portal, our patient portal here at Travers Health Clinic, as well as we utilize the Hilo app. And our staff help that patient get familiarized with that. If you don't have a smart device or computer, the health clinic is also conducting appointments over the phone. 
The spring turkey season is still on. Next in the Hook and Hunting Report, the new rules for the hunt. Well, the stay-at-home order is still in effect. Turkey season is open. The Michigan DNR says there are still turkey licenses available. They say it's a great time to enjoy the outdoors and relax. The DNR wants to remind hunters to stay at least six feet away from people who aren't in your household. Clean your hands often and stay close to home. Long-distance travel is only for essential trips. For more information on turkey season and to buy a license, we've shared the link on 9in10news.com. I got really close with the coach and the team and just felt right. Next in sports, Izzy Turnbull makes, us, makes school history. She will wrestle in college. Busy Turnbull only wrestled three years at Boyne City, but she did well enough to impress Adrian College. She will be the first female wrestler from Boyne to compete collegiately in wrestling. Turnbull started to turn some heads when she competed in the first girls' state championship in wrestling last year at Adrian College. She finished in fourth place and followed that with a third place finish this year. I'm super excited. It's always been something coaches always talk to me about but I was, I was like no I'm not that good and then it came and the coach came up to me and he talked to me and I was like oh okay I did a postseason competition with them so I did trainings there every Sunday for a couple hours and I also did a few camps and clinics there so I got really close with the coach and the team and just felt right I love a story on the first Des Moines City boys athlete to commit to wrestle collegiately next week on 9 and 10 news sticking in Boyne City a legendary cross-country coach has called it a career Andy Place retired after coaching 33 years in the Boyne City area. He first worked at Boyne Falls for 12 years before making the move to Boyne City for the remainder of, of his career. Place says he's made the decision to spend more time with his family. I get people asking me, uh, um, oh, so you given everything up like I'm moving to Florida or something. I don't know, <laughs> that, you know, I'm about retiring. And, um, no, I'm, I'm still going to be around, but uh, this is when I get a chance to... Uh, uh, to be that, that grandparent that gets to uh, all of my grandkids' uh, activities and things like that. Chelsea Herman will take over the program. Place said he will still coach the girls' track and field team in the spring. And that weekend forecast looks pretty good right now. There you go for Friday. A lot of sunshine, just a few clouds. A lot of showers on Saturday, cooling down your temperatures. And for Sunday, looking a whole lot better. More sunshine as the warmth builds back in. Sunshine is good news. Thank you, Tom. Thank you so much for joining us. The CBS Evening News is next. Have a great night. Access 9 and 10 news anytime, anywhere. Watch live on SB TV or listen on enabled devices. Get the Doppler 9 and 10 weather app, plus the best in local sports on the My Sports Now app. 9 and 10 news, Northern Michigan's news leader.